because yeah. I got the charts yeah. ready. There we go. I think we're live now. Hello, hello, everyone. This is Lada from astrolab.com. And today my guest is the beautiful and brilliant evolutionary astrologer. Because I've got, the, oh, yeah. I've got the charts ready. Oops. <laughs> yes, and she will talk to us how she sees the evolutionary meaning of the uh, Uranus conjunct uh, Jupiter in the sign of Taurus, which is coming on the 20th of April. I know, it's, but it's not just one day. It will have effect for the next 14 years, but the peak is now. And I want to welcome Mila. Hello, Mila. Hi, Lada. Thank you for having me back. It's a pleasure to be here. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to hear the evolutionary perspective of this conjunction because there is a lot of emphasis on the negatives it can bring, but you always, always introduce to us the higher perspective for the evolution of the soul. And I look forward to it. And anyway, if anyone would like to contact Mila for a personal reading, I will put a link below to her services. They're very affordable. She's not just astrologer, she's also psychic, she downloads and she just, <laughs> you you here now, if you've never met Mila, this is Mila. <laughs> oh, thank you. Okay, well, I think it would quite help people to see the visual so we can build up on the story because as we know in astrology, everything is cyclical and nothing just begins at the moment of this particular transit. So uh, this transit actually is ending a cycle that began in 2010, 2011 because Jupiter and Uranus had a triple conjunction throughout this period because of, the, of them be, both being retrograde. And the very first conjunction happened in June 2010, which happened in Aries, but the other two happened in Pisces. And actually, this is what I want to show people because it's important for everyone to understand what was going on uh, astrologically at that point, and that's what's culminating now. And also, as we could have gone into the um, solar eclipse in Aries, that's also something that didn't begin now. It began 20, uh, 20, uh, 2004. And uh, this is like how we just build up because nothing in actual uh, our human experience is separate everything is it's a spiral we all are like on a spiral of evolution and there are cycles within cycles and within cycles and within cycles so actually this jupiter uranus conjunction even though there is a lot of potentially doom and gloom that people are worried about because uranus expect the unexpected but evolutionary this is exactly where we are meant to be because already in 2010 everything was indicating for these times that we are now um, in and heading towards that everything was ripe for it it was the preparation for the times that we are actually experiencing right now so that's why i wanted to share because it's so important for people uh, to actually see and understand that why this is happening and it has to happen the way that it does Okay, um, I think you should be able to see the chart now. Okay, yes, so I this, is, this is the first one. It happened on June 8, 2010. And at the time, the nodes were in Cancer and Capricorn. So with Pluto, we always look at where Pluto is, where are the nodes and the south nodes, uh, because this is the evolution. This is how Pluto navigates. So at the time, Pluto was just newly in the Capricorn. It moved into Capricorn in 2008. We know that now Pluto is just about to end with Capricorn. We have one more retrograde September to November, and then Pluto is done with Capricorn. And once Pluto is done with the sign, that's it. The sign is deconstructed. It's it. That's it. We're moving on. So it's very interesting to see that at the time the north node was in capricorn and saturn during the first conjunction was still in virgo what is virgo virgo is about the learning and adjusting the hero's journey the continuation of change because virgo is a mutable sign we learn we adjust then of course it's all the mutable cross we gather information through gemini oh and guess what the, the sun was in gemini so it's all about the choice and we can see this was just before the new moon in gemini moon was closing to gemini and what does this mean well moon was in on 27 degrees of aries which is not far off from where we had this eclipse the one that just took place now recently on april 8th and a moon was coming towards the sun which means that this is what we call the Aquarian phase, 
is the phase just before the new moon. So we want to liberate. And moon is in Aries, which is saying that we want to go in a new direction because the direction that we are coming from, the south node in Cancer ruled by moon, it's now no longer in resonance. We could see Venus as the current ruler because we know that uh, nothing is really linear. All the timelines are interconnected. So even though this is 2010, whatever was happening then is still affecting us now. So the current ruler of the south node, which interestingly enough today as we recorded in this, Venus is conjuncting the North Node. Venus as the rule of the South Node is conjuncting the North Node. So again, in other reset points, we're going in a new direction with regards to relationship towards oneself and relationship to the other, which is Libra, the external environment. So at the time, we can see that Venus and the South Node were already in a new phase conjunction. They already had a conjunction and the moon as the rule of the south node and Venus was in Aries, but it was closing to sun, which was saying that, OK, we are closing cycles because we need to make a new choice because the identity, the version of ourselves we identified with prior to, you know, the times is actually now ending because it's the south node and north node is in Capricorn. Pluto and north node were in a closing phase conjunction. And that said that there was a cycle closing where we externalize our power with the Venus being in a new phase conjunction to south node. It's saying now you have to learn to uh, nurture yourself enough to trust yourself, to reconnect with yourself so you feel empowered. And we can see at the time of the first conjunction, there was this beautiful kite. And the interesting thing is that this last conjunction we are just about to have now, this is the April 20th, which is the conjunction now 2024, the kite is back there. But of course, it's different sign, but we have another kite. So it was all divinely blessed. It was all divinely orchestrated. So we can see the conjunction happened in Aries on zero degrees, 18 minutes. One and eight is number nine, which is about closing. Closing of the cycle, culmination, but it's not the totality because it's the 10. The 10 is the complete ending and the beginning of the new cycle. The nine is just the before. It's like the void moon before the new moon happens. So we are releasing, but we're not ready to start a new cycle yet because the moon has to close to sun. And at the time, we can see Neptune as the rule. Uh, well, uh, it's, it's the rule about the house. Comes before. The next two conjunctions, Neptune was the exact rule of the Jupiter and Uranus. But Neptune here is actually conjuncting Chiron and Chiron is in Pisces. The other two times they conjunct, Neptune and Chiron are both in Aquarius. So we can see already we dip in our toes into the new, which is this be beginning of the closing of the cycles. And Saturn, as the ruler of the North Node, was square in Pluto. So Saturn is in a, what we call closing square. This is the crisis in consciousness, something that we need to release in order for the new cycle to take place. And uh, we can see Mars was on zero degrees on Virgo. Zero degrees is, again, is the unlimited potential of anything that can be. We need to make an adjustment. How are we going to make it is up to us, but the evolution is going ahead because the cycles are ending. There is a reset point, Aries, zero degrees, but on 18 degrees, which is the number nine, culminating and uh, beginning a new cycle. So that cycle of culmination had begun, and we know Neptune was just about to move into the sign of Pisces two years later in 2012. Well, so if we go to the next one, Saturn, as the ruler of the North Node, was squaring the nodes. Resolution South Node. Moon was in Aquarius. Here, Chiron and Neptune are both in, a, both in a Aquarius. What does this actually all mean? And what I'm actually building up to explaining is that what we actually came here, well, not came here, but right now what's happening is that the story Jupiter, the belief system, the story, Taurus, that we have about ourselves, you know, because Taurus is our self-love, self-worth, believing in our abilities to create whatever we need to nurture, our, to sustain ourselves, because Taurus on a base level is about survival. It's about preservation. It's about, it's the food, it's everything that we, that we need in our human incarnation to survive. So with the Jupiter and Uranus being in Pisces at this time retrograde, and Neptune as the ruler being in Aquarius, it's saying we need to close the cycles of allowing the trauma to define our ability to connect to our external environment, to actually survive, to be able to not just survive, but actually thrive. And Sun at the time was in Virgo, again, Virgo, which is about learning and adjusting. What had we learned with the Pisces 
you know, this conjunction in Pisces, what have we learned throughout the Pisces age, throughout this past 2000 years of human evolution that we now see the totality of manifestation, we, we totally understand the Pisces age now, and we have very, very little understanding of the Aquarius age because the shift just happened recently in last century. So we are at the very, very beginning of this 2160 or whatever year cycle. So we are like, well, you know, we kind of trying to figure it out as we go, but it's saying that, well, with this Chiron being in a new phase conjunction in Neptune, it's saying we need to heal the wounding of the past, especially because they are all retrograde. Retrograde is introspective. We need to go within and we need to heal the wounding of the disconnection of the past ages that made us feel imprisoned. Pisces, prison, victimhood mentality. We have no choice. So actually what I'm you know, building up with all of this is this who are you really, you know, in this human body coming here on planet Earth? Like, what is the story that we tell ourselves that we actually adopted from the stories we were being told? Because is that actually truth? Because as we know, Sagittarius is a mutable sign. You know, it's a subjective perception of reality. My truth is different from your truth, from somebody else's truth. It's all impacted and influenced by where we come from, culture, religion, history, ancestral line, all the rest of it has an impact on our truth. But truth is mutable because we speak to someone from one side of the planet to the other. It might not be the same truth, but they are both right, right? So with the jupiter Uranus conjunction, it's saying about the story of the past is ending. And because the story is now, you know, the conjunction is now happening in Taurus, this, all this conjunction at the time were a preparation for that. So now again, sidetracking, going back to this, we can see Saturn is square in the nose, pointing to the south node, resolution node. What do we need to release? The sense of unsafety because we can see that majority of people you know like feeling unsafe in their adulthood is because they weren't exactly being nurtured the way they needed when they were children because child and i know you are a mom so you know when a child feels safe and secure when it keeps when it can see its mother it is it is happy to go and play and explore and you know be all mischievous and all that if a child doesn't feel safe he's not gonna do that it's going to get very scared. It's going to want to attach to the mother. It wants to want to have the sense of safety and security. If it doesn't see the mother, that's it. You know, so there is that desire. There is the need for connection as a child because that, um, you know, like a guarantee survival. That's the, the, the teaching of Dr. Dr. Gabor Mate, uh, who says the children has two needs. It's a need for connection because that is the survival and need for authenticity. And if the connection is not there, if the basic needs are not being met, there's uh, authenticity is being suppressed and that's what happened with most of us that we had to suppress our authenticity because the external environment said in order for you to connect to this and survive you need to be a certain way so going back to cancer if we had to disconnect with ourselves because we didn't feel safe and secure in our environment then we lost the connection because potentially all of us as children we felt certain way we wanted to be certain way we wanted to act out certain way but we were being told this is acceptable and this isn't and you you know it's that which you feel is actually incorrect so you shouldn't trust yourself you should trust the external authority capricorn and this is what's gonna make you feel safe and secure in the world because you're gonna fit in and blend in right but what we really lost was that direct line to god universe whatever you call it because that is always there it's always there our intuition our emotion is always there our body communicates with us all the time telling us with something's right or not we have a physical somatic response to situations and circumstances so with the saturn square in the south node well, both nodes and Saturn being in Libra and being the ruler of the North Node and Pluto and the North Node were in, in a closing conjunction is actually saying, well, we need to really dig deep within and realize what it is that made us feel disconnected from ourselves because we feel unsafe to even be who we are. And the moon was in Aquarius. Well, look at let's look at the disco because Aquarius, uh, one of the things that Aquarius rules is actually trauma. Because something that happened suddenly, unexpectedly, and we, we couldn't resolve it. So it got, you know, tucked away in the subconscious mind and then get triggered throughout the life. And Chiron and Neptune are both in Aquarius at the same time. Jupiter, Uranus conjunction in Pisces. We need to look back at what happened and why it happened, understand the meaning of that happening, and then be able to heal and integrate it so we can move on. So the last conjunction prior to this one, which is technically the one that we close in the cycle, actually happened on the eclipse. 
the last conjunction between Jupiter and Uranus prior to the one that we are just approaching now in three days time happened on the eclipse in Capricorn. This was a solar eclipse, new moon solar eclipse in Capricorn. We can see this happened a few hours later. Moon is already ahead of the sun. So that means that we birth in a new version of ourselves, new empowered version of ourselves. And we are in a year eight, the year now ruled by number eight is ruled by Saturn and Jupiter, which is all about expansion, manifestation. But we have to do the work. The work is you need to be able to take responsibility and step into your own power in order to, to feel safe and secure to make the choices. Then there are an, enabling you to create the re reality you want. Otherwise, we externalize the power to someone else, external authority, and we can see Mars was in a new phase conjunction already. Moon was in a new phase conjunction. Pluto was in a closing phase conjunction. Still in a, uh, actually at this time, the south mode, they were already in a, yeah, they were already in a new phase conjunction. Mercury is in Sagittarius. What are we learning? Sagittarius is ruled by Jupiter. Uranus and Jupiter conjunction was still in Pisces. What are we, what are we closing? What are we culminating based on what we've learned? And by this stage, hopefully, with the moon now being in Capricorn, we know that the only way we will ever feel safe and secure is actually if we are uh, conscious of the fact that we are a conscious, we are a creators of our reality, and that's what gives us a sense of empowerment because then we feel in control of our life, you know. And then it's also about the co-creation with the spirit, which is the Pisces, the higher self, the human self, and the higher self, and also the ego mind and the higher mind. Have, everything has to be in balance. So it's very interesting that the last conjunction happened on an eclipse, which is karmic. And it was the Capricorn eclipse, and Pluto is just about to have last retrograde in Capricorn. So everything got seeded long time ago. This is not something that is just happening now. And even if we go back in history and listen to news and stuff, like there have always been the same thing that we are experiencing now. They were just different details, or maybe they were happening differently at different times. But it was exactly the same thing. Whether we go back to 2020, 2017, 2010, 2008, 2004, you know, like uh, 20th century there always was war there always was natural disaster there always was division there always was all of these things why because people don't feel safe and secure within themselves to just be who they are and they continuously projecting their unhealed wounding into the external world and want somebody else to resolve it for them which is why we also keep giving our power away to the authorities and expecting them to resolve it for us <laughs> or something like that. You know, it's all this Capricorn, but in a lower vibration, we project our unhealed cancer onto the Capricorn, which is the external authority. So now we go into the chart now, and this is really what I want to, you know, dive into deeply, the Uranus and Jupiter conjunction in Taurus. So what is actually closing the cycle of is our disconnection from ourselves. Because Taurus is like the carbon body, is the manifestation, is the tangible thing, is the sensual experience, uh, activating all our five senses that are allowing us as a soul incarnate in a human body to have an experience, to interact with this, with this world that we can see manifesting, which, yeah, we can go into a many rabbit hole of discussion that is a hologram and illusion and all the rest of it. But while you are in a human form, we are interacting with something that is real to us right here, right now, because we are connected to the reality through our body, right? So with the jupiter Uranus conjunction, what all this was about, all this preparation, you know, Capricorn, Moon, South Node ruler, you know, you need to let go of, you know, feeling unsafe and uh, of the identities that made us believe that we are unsafe, being in here, being in a human body, and that's why we need someone else to keep us feel safe and secure, which in this case was something that is tangible but it's external of us and the reason for all of that is because actually all the answers all the gifts all the tools all the purpose everything is already within you the seed is already within you just like acorn no it's gonna become what it's gonna become you know the seed of the carrot knows it's gonna become carrot you know it doesn't need somebody else to tell it what it's gonna become it's the same with humans we all came with the seed we all know what we're going to become but throughout the thousands of years of these connections, especially the Pisces age, where we gave our power to this something that uh, resembled the truth, because it's something like spirit, you know, like a religion, for example, there is a, a something of a truth in that, 
but it still uh, creates a, a sense of disempowerment because we need that third party to connect us to the divine or something. So we were throughout the hundred, hundreds of years and thousands of years, we were being conditioned that us as human in this body, we are imperfect, you know, the Virgo in a low vibration, we are imperfect, uh, we are not good enough. We should be ashamed and guilty for being human. It was it was literally a genius idea because you know of all this game of life, this stage that we are all playing role as humans on planet Earth because this is a school of life. That was a genius idea. How soul can grow and evolve through the biggest challenges and obstacles? Well, let's just believe that that which make, makes us feel empowered and directly connected to everything we need is actually something that we should disconnect from. You know, this Aquarius, this Aquarius, Neptune, Chiron, where are we disconnected from ourselves because of trauma? Because when we go back to Leo, childhood and cancer, our ancestral line and the heritage that again, un unhealed uh, inner child wounds become an ancestor wounding. Unhealed uh, ancestor wounding becomes unhealed inner child wounding. It just keeps passed on and it's all part of the same soup collective consciousness because everything is interconnected. It's, it's this uh, desire to return, return back to oneness and wholeness. And that's really Pisces in the highest octave. You know, Pisces in the higher octave is the, this was the, this was the beginning of that. That was the reset point where we, it, it, that's it. We maxed out all these past identities of externalization, our power to someone else. It's maxed out. We need to return back to wholeness, back to oneness, because that's the only way we will ever feel empowered. And now we are in the age of Aquarius. Yes, we have one more retrograde into Capricorn, but since from November 2024 until, uh, m what is it, like uh, March or February or March 2023, either way, Pluto is in Aquarius non non-stop then it's going to move into pisces right on time for the total solar eclipse on a north node in aries the next one because the the solar eclipses in uh the next round of libra aries are going to be in uh well the eclipses uh, in aries will be on a south node the next eclipse round uh on the north node in aries will be in 2043 so anyway, so, you know, by that point, Pluto will already be in Pisces. So everything is interconnected. So I don't want to go too much into the eclipse mode again. But what is this trying to help us culminate is the story of the past that we were being told about ourselves that made us feel disconnected from ourselves, therefore disempowered. And therefore, throughout all the centuries and thousands of years, we were looking for that outside of us because we were being told that we are all these things, all these things that are not good enough. And therefore, we need something outside of us to make us feel connected to whatever it is that we seek the connection from because this is natural for all of us we have the wiring that we want to connect whether it's to human or it's power outside of us because that's what we remember that's the natural state the pisces connection to all connection to source so this is what we seek in all our life but we were being told oh you need this person or this religion or this uh designer back or something else to feel connected to something so we've tried all of, we've tried all of it and it got to got us to this point in our human evolution where uh, the the this connection's gone so far that we cannot go any further. We feel disconnected from everything, from nature, from ourselves, from each other, from God, from everything, literally. And that is now creating a world which is like, you know, in a deep mourning because it feels like we don't even know what else can we connect to, to feel connected. Where's the answer always been within itself? Well, you need to connect with yourself and that's where you find the answer to everything. And that will help, help us and allow us to then connect to everything else outside of us because it starts with the cancer, the South Node in cancer. We need to let go of these ego identities, all these labels we were being given because actually that is not the truth who you are. The truth of who you are is a divine being that comes from the source. You are a unique expression to source, but you are connected to everything. But we, we lost it throughout these hundreds of years and especially the 2000 years of Pisces. But it goes well beyond that uh, when the clump was put on a human collective consciousness and evolution of a humankind that goes all the way back thousands and thousands of years. We lost it. And now 2024, we are in a state where, well, we cannot go further any, any further than this. The next conjunction between Jupiter and Uranus, I believe, is going to be in Cancer. So isn't that interesting? At the time of the most recent conjunction, South Node was in Cancer, and the next conjunction after this will be in Cancer, which is about this new identity. Also, the next conjunction between Chiron and North Node will be in Cancer, and then Gemini because of the retrograde. So we see like a lot of things are navigating us back to home. 
what is the home? The home is the connection to ourselves and to spirit. So with the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction, what's really ending here is the cycle of disconnection from ourselves, because if you want to go forward and if you want to step into our power, we need to reconnect to our body, because the body is the instrument through which the soul actually connects to this human experience and all the answers are in there. And as I said, today, as we're recording this, we are actually having the Venus North Node conjunction. And Venus is the ruler of the uh, conjunction, you know, Jupiter-Uranus conjunction. And also the Uranus-Jupiter conjunction is happening a day before Venus will conjunct Chiron and will start a new cycle between herself and Chiron. The cycle that last time happened, well, the cycle now is the cycle is ending that began last year on 3 3 2023, which is when Venus and Chiron conjuncted last time. And at that time, Venus was the ruler of the North Node in Taurus. So we have again the Taurus coming up, which is all about our connection to oneself because that determines our connection to everything else. Because when we look at the zodiac of wheel and think about, tell me. In, in Taurus, the conjunction is about connecting to the physical side, to the body. Okay. Yes, yes. Because the Aries is, is, is like the, the spark of manifestation, but we need the mm -hmm. earth, uh, you know, the, we need the earth to materialize it. So the Aries is like the divine sparkle that comes in, the sparkle of creation that has a potential. The, the Aries is the potential for anything because the beginning, but it needs the Taurus, it needs to become the form for it to connect to the external world. And then it's the Gemini, the communication, the way we connect, you know, the hands, the going to school and all that. And then it's the Cancer where we build the sense of identity, who we are, and that impacts our sense of purpose. And then that determines how we're going to be of a service and what role we're going to play in a society and whether we feel empowered or disempowered and what is the story behind it. How, you know, are we exploring this reality, you know, like the um, uh, exploring of the horizons and then eventually we either feel that we are our own authority or we feel somebody else's. It depends how we identify and how we see ourselves. And then with the Aquarius, OK, now the, the cycle is ending. We can release it, let it all go because the cycle is about to end and a new cycle begin. So with the Taurus, <laughs> that's what I mean. If we are disconnected from ourselves and from the tangible, you know, body from our own body that we continuously want to escape this reality or we are distracting ourselves and whatever, and we are not even connected to ourselves, we don't hear our emotions and our body speaking to us, then how can we connect to anything else? Like, it, 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 I mean, we can, but it's not going to be potentially from for our highest good because, you know, it's all like happening in a sense by... Um, attracting situation that then are going to help us to understand that we need to reconnect in ourselves, which is literally what's going on in the world right now, that how uh, how extreme things have to get for people to actually stop um, responding in the same way. And when everything outside of us becomes crazy, then the only way is within. There is no other way. So this is literally what's happening, that we are being pushed further and further um, like further and further from uh, externalizing our power to the external world because everything is losing meaning. So we have to go within because there is nowhere else to go. If things outside of us uh, are no longer making us feel safe, secure, and they are losing, um, you know, the sense of um, truth or something, you know, like the sense of connection, then the only way we can, that's, that's why when people go through the most challenging situation in their life that's usually when they find spirit when they find god when they go back within you know when people lose someone that's usually when they retrieve into their hermit cave and reconnect with themselves and this is how it works on the micro and macrocosm so with this jupiter uranus conjunction yes there could be things that are very unexpected but we can see it's again kite and moon is on 29 degrees uh, of Virgo, and when it when this all began, Mars as the ru current ruler of the North Node was on zero degrees on Virgo, and now Moon as the at that time ruler of the South Node is on twenty nine degrees of Virgo. That's what I mean. The cycle is now ending because we had the opportunity to learn and discern over this past thirteen fourteen years period what everything now doesn't work because Pluto just at the time had begun with Capricorn. Now Pluto is just about to end with Capricorn and you say, okay, well, we had this opportunity throughout Pluto transiting through Capricorn to see that we will never feel safe and secure and empowered and free 
if we keep externalizing our power to someone else, because that there is a that's a hierarchical system, and this is uh, no longer in alignment. It doesn't mean that you know we don't want people to look up to or something. But the best leader is the one that make you your own leader, that inspires you to become your own leader, not that will take your power away from you and make you feel like a child, because that's the cancer. So we can see how everything is coming the full circle. And that's why all this is happening. Also, we can see, you know, the sun just had a conjunction with Chiron. Uh, of course, it's uh, putting everything behind the sun, which creates the closing phase because sun is the center stage. But at this point, sun is already in Taurus, ruled by Venus. Venus is in a new phase conjunction to North Node. And you had begun with regards to how we're going to resolve the South Node because Venus is the ruler. South Node is what we're trying to evolve. And what is the South Node? Well, the South Node is in Libra. It's saying, where did we externalize our power? So we lost the sense of balance. Because Libra is not just our human relationship, like, uh, you know, like me being in a relationship with another person. Libra is our bridge to the world we are experiencing. It's actually our relationship to life, you know? So Libra is like, how do I connect? to my life, you know, to, to everything that's around me, not, not just a person, even though, of course, people are the best mirror for us, but it's everything. So Venus now being in a new phase conjunction with Aries as of today, under the influence of Moon in Leo still today, destiny and joy and uh, what is your uh, authentic expression. So Venus being in a new phase conjunction, still ruled by Mars in Pisces, now in a new phase with Saturn, there are new beginnings and endings, and Mars is in Pisces, which is again taking us back to the source, back to the spirit, back to understanding the meaning of everything that came before and why it had to take place the way it did. There's no point beating ourselves up about it, like, oh, we were enslaved in society for thousands of years, blah, blah, blah. It's not our fault. No, it isn't, but it happened and there was a meaning in it. We can argue about what was the meaning and purpose of that, but for whatever reason, that it played out the way it did and, you know, it served its purpose. Now, we are, there is no need for us to keep recreating the same wheel now in 20, uh, 21st century, right, with Pluto in Aquarius. So what, what have we learned? So it's not about us being in denial that it did not happen or feeling angry and victimized because it did happen it's about okay let's extract the meaning of that and you know like learn learn the you know learn the lesson the virgo this so it, we can discern for the future and move on because everything serves a role everything serves serves a purpose and a meaning and even like with everything that's going on crazy in the world what is the meaning to that well the meaning is that of course if it still exists, there is something that needs healing. And also it requires us for, for us to start making a new choice under all circumstances. That's what all these new phases and all closing phases are representing. We need to start making a new choice under all circumstances and have the higher vision. Like, you know, like, yeah, we can retaliate right here, right now at this moment, because you did this to me, I did this to you. Again, this eye for an eye. That's, you know, like, I'm not going to even share my opinion about that, but that's just going to create the same outcome. Because, you know, if we keep doing the same thing, we, we cannot expect different outcomes. So if we go eye for an eye, then yeah, then there will be more eye for the eye. You know, it will never change because it will, it's the same frequency. So then what is the resolution? What is the story? I mean, I don't have all the answers, but we need to start from within, like to heal within. So we don't feel, you know, like every single time something happens, there is this huge trigger that completely takes us out of balance and make us go back to our, you know, either primitive, you know, part of the brain or this flight, fight, response, continuous fear, which is when we cannot access you know, the, the connection to the divine or the uh, more um, inspired solution that would perhaps help us or allow us to implement a new solution to the situation. Because when we're scared or when we are in the flight fight, you know, stressed and angry and all that, then we don't have an access to solution. We just like trying to survive. We just trying to run away from the danger, from the tiger. And unfortunately, this is how human collective has been kept in this state for majority of the time which is why so many people have nervous problems with the nervous system because how how uh, you know how, for how long can body be under so much stress it's natural for us to you know have this response to danger you know but then we shake it off and then we move on with life right but majority of people especially because of the influence of current media and how it's running majority of people are in this state of flight fight response the sympathetic nervous system activation most of the time 
and that then creates this, you know, attracting the same situation, thinking of the same solution, which attract the same situation. We are like in the, you know, in the hamster wheel. So with all these conjunctions that are taking place at the moment, and we can see everything is Pisces, Aries, and now Taurus, because by this point, Sun is in Taurus. So we started the Taurus season, and Sun is still squaring. I mean, actually, Sun is going to square exact out of the day later. Uh, this is the first square since their... Uh, Yes, this is the first square since their conjunction, which happened, we made a video about it, 29 degrees, 59 minutes. The last conjunction between Pluto and uh, Sun in the sign of Capricorn in our lifetime. And this is the first square since. Now, because of the nature of the Sun, it makes the last quarter square energy, which is the crisis in consciousness. What do we need to release in order for the cycle to end? Because the next time Sun and Pluto are going to conjunct, will be in the sign of Aquarius in Aquarius season next year, 2025, by which point the nodes will have already moved into Pisces and Virgo, which is all about healing, adjust, adjusting, and culminating these cycles because now we have the opportunity to discern, okay, yeah, we've tried that kind of approach many, many times and it led to, met, to the same outcome. And literally, if people don't believe me, you can go through the history and listen to random news from any age, any year. It doesn't matter. There always was a war. There always was a natural disaster. Why are these things coming around over and over and over and over and over again? Because there is still this wounding that makes us feel disconnected. This Aquarius, this trauma, we cannot process all these identities and stories we were being told about ourselves that made us reject the, you know, the authentic aspects of ourselves, the childlike innocence. It was being taken away. It was being stolen for majority of us. And then we lost the connection to God or to universe or to whoever. What well, doesn't matter the uh, label. Buddha, Allah, doesn't matter what is the label. That divine, the divine essence of ourselves, it got lost. And then we felt we need to externalize and look for it somewhere else, somewhere outside of us, which means that we would continue to give our keep giving our power away. Because if we need something outside of us to make us feel safe and secure, then that is our Capricorn. <clears throat> that is our authority. And the authority can call the shots, which will always make us feel like children, cancer, unsafe, because the parent will decide. Are you going to get grounded or not? I call the shots. Majority of us heard our parents saying when we were children, you live under my roof, my rules, right? And this is how it is. And now it's the same. It's just different body telling you the same thing. It's not your mom and dad. It's someone else telling you the same thing. But this is literally what it is. With the Aquarius, we're going beyond Capricorn. Aquarius is about the equality. But how we're going to get to Aquarius of a higher vibration is through healing that inner child, healing the disconnection, healing all these labels and stories we were being told that we got attached to that made us feel limited, made us feel this is all we are. All I am are all these labels I was being given and I accumulated throughout my life, which is not who you are. We are all here just like fools in a tarot through going through the 78 passages of life, of growth, having an experience. Like, yeah, it's very real while we're in the, this human form, but it's not all we are. It's not the totality of that. It's just an, a chapter of a big book in Akashic Records that it's saying, yeah, in this incarnation right here, right now, this is the role you're playing. But in one lifetime, you're going to play multiple roles. We're all going to have multiple purposes. It's not like, you know, I'm, I'm being born as this and I'm going to die and I'm going to be the same person. Very unlikely for very few of us, especially at this time and age. So in order for us to find the true guidance and to you know, find that uh, resourcefulness and the ability to manifest whatever we want, because Taurus, Virgo and Capricorn, they try and one another. If we don't trust ourselves and we don't feel that we, you know, gathered enough tools to be able to create what we want, we will never feel masterful. We will never feel that we are in charge, that we, uh, yeah, we have something to share and offer. And it's not about perfection. That's again, that's the lower vibration of Virgo, the one that we were being conditioned by, especially by the religion, Pisces that said you have to be perfect no you are perfect when you are spirit when you come to human form you come here to have an experience which includes a myriad of different feelings emotions ups and downs and that's it because this is the planet of polarity at least it is at the moment so how would we know if we didn't experience the opposite if we didn't see the opposite and that's also the other aspect of what's going on in the world right now all we can hear about is the darkness but as also people might have heard, 
They might, they might have not. For every poison, there is a cure in the nature. And very often it grows right next to each other. If there is a poisonous plant, very likely, not far from it, you will find the one that actually is a cure to that. You know, and this is how it operates because universe will never create one thing without the other. You know, there is always a balance. There is universe always strives for a balance point, for the equilibrium. So what does this mean in the current situation we find ourselves in? All we can hear about is all the doom and gloom and all the darkness and shadow. Yes, it's present. But what does that mean? as the polarity of that is that more and more people are waking up. There is more and more light streaming through. There is more and more help and support available because one cannot exist without the other. And that's why the more people are waking up, the more intense things on a surface are becoming. And the more intense things are becoming, the more people are embodying the light because there always has to be the balance. So that's why it's time to end this story, make this adjustment, this 29 degrees of Virgo to understand what all this is for. All this for is for us to have a human experience to help us co-create a better world for us all by actually learning from the past, understanding, having compassion for the old version of ourselves, which were not always a light worker. This is another thing. We go judging all these people that play these shadow roles. And don't get me wrong, you know, I'm happy I'm not playing it right here, right now. But I'm sure I played it at some point in one of my incarnation or more. So it's not about judgment. It's about, okay, how is this actually serving us? How is this polarity serving us? Well, it's showing us what is no longer desired because it's no longer in alignment at the level of human consciousness we are um, embodying at the moment that we have available to us. So we can see again the kite. Look, Mars is right in between the Saturn and Neptune. Mars is in the new phase conjunction with Saturn. The new way we're going to co-create a different world is through spirit through connection to your higher self, through connection to everything there is, because the, the state of the world now is the um, result of the disconnection. So we all actually want to just come back to peace of balance, to the place of balance, harmony and equilibrium and to 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 the connection to everything. People just the people people are craving connection. They craving, you know, feeling um, that they have someone to speak to or be seen or all, all the rest of it. But Mars is also in a closing phase to Neptune. They're going to have a conjunction on April 28th, right after the full moon in Scorpio, rules by Mars traditionally, Pluto, through a new astrology eye point, viewpoint. And like I said, um, well, Mercury, Chiron, they already had two conjunctions. They're going to have one more. Mercury, as we discussed last time, is a very important component because Mercury is the is the Gemini, is the connection, is also the Virgo. How are we making adjustments once we connect with the reality and it don't no longer feel in alignment it no longer makes us feel that this is the story that we want to participate in going for further so now what story do we want to create we are approaching the full moon in uh, sagittarius next month with jupiter moving into the sign of gemini so it's all about the choice this is the year literally this is the year where people will have to make a choice do we want to keep repeating the same mistakes which you know you can, we can look at it in multiple ways because these things Call, we call mistakes, we're learning curves. So we had enough time to learn, you know, and to understand that if we're going to keep responding in the same way, we're going to keep recreating the same result. And how much suffering, how many, how much collateral damage, how many casualties has to, you know, sacrifice, be sacrificed in order for us to understand that this is not going to work anymore. So how are we going to resolve it? Well, one stone at a time, one person at a time. The healing has to come from within because, as we know, the reality is being created from inside out. The outside is just the feedback mechanism. So for us to create a different world, it doesn't mean all these things are not happening and they will continue to happen. But this is the opportunity to actually go within and tap into our own resourcefulness to start manifesting at least in our inner world and our visualization and the connection with our immediate environment that we have a control over to start visualizing and manifesting step by step, person by person, a different world because the scale has to be tipped at some point. Because at the moment, and this is I'm sure what I mentioned last time as well, a lot of people are feeling guilty if they are not the one being part of the you know immediate suffering and stuff, but actually if you imagine the scales, if you keep adding to the same side of the scale, which is the suffering, the, the, the you know, all, all the lower vibrational frequency, then who's going to put stuff on the other side? And we're not going to balance the scale if everything is just being put on the one side of the scale. 
But again, with the South Node being in Libra, we need to retrieve all the energy and all the life force that we are leaking for all these external happenings that then are creating the reality we don't potentially want because we are still co-creating it because they need our life force because we are literally like in a movie matrix, which most people watch, we are like the battery. They are leaking our life force to create what they want. But how about you take your life force back and create what you want, whatever that is for you. And then, yeah, then if enough people done the healing and start responding in a different way and look at things from a different angle, then maybe we can make a different choice. And this is all individual and collective because the collective is made of individuals. And, the in, in, you know, like that's what I mean. It goes back to the Taurus. It goes back to you. Where do you feel disconnected? Because we were being made to feel that, you know, this body is faulty, all this... Um, social media and all this programming and all these stories throughout the history of human that made us feel this is the perfection. Women should look like that. Men should look like that. We should all behave like that. And nobody can ever fully fulfill any of these criteria because this is not the right thing for everyone because we are all unique. We are all unique expression of the source. So we disconnect it. We are, uh, most people are at war with themselves. And then we surprise, why do we still see war in the world? Well, because majority of us are in a, different degrees of rejection of who we are and our bodies and our role that we play and all the rest of it but you came here with the, the purpose and meaning which is unique to you and nobody can, else can tell you what it is so the story of taurus which is the story of thousands of years of disconnection from yourself which is where all the answers lie. So that's what I mean. That was the most genius thing that could ever happen because you are the instrument of change so the way is to go back within the Venus with the new phase conjunction in uh, with the North Node. Venus is the rule of the South Node. We need to take the power back from the external and start from the scratch. All these Aries, still all these Aries energy, we need to go from the blank slate and start seeing world from a different eye, which is the higher perspective. What would the, what would the love do? Many people know this question. What would the love do? How would the love react? Because actually, if you really think about it deeply, majority of people in the world do not want to experience what's happening right now. They don't want war. They don't want separation. They don't want all these continuous arguments and fights and all this you know, stuff that makes us feel scared and depressed and unhappy. M most people don't want it. Most people just want to get on with their life and just, you know, do things that makes them happy and have, you know, a good life with their family and whatever, you know, want better life for the children, you know, that kind of thing. So there is a very, very small percentage of people that actually want what's going on. And uh, yeah, and these are the loud ones, you know, that creates the noise, the distraction. So how are we going to change it? Well, like I said, one person at a time, but we are literally at the drawing board right now. And it's the time to make a choice because when Jupiter moves into Gemini, which is a pre precursor of Uranus moving into Gemini next year, things are going to start moving forward in the direction of the timeline you are choosing yourself. So this is why we have to go back to our center. Mm. So all those conjunctions around the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction means a really new phase and more free will that we'll have in a new direction. And you describe it like an evolutionary spiral. So I, I suppose this Uranus Jupiter is like a new new round of this evolutionary spiral that it's almost like shooting you with a rocket. Uh, I remember the last Jupiter Uranus conjunction was uh when my life changed. And uh, it it just made the trying to my mid-heaven. That was about it, but it's when I started my business. Uh, everything is like that was my the beginning of my process of freedom because I was able to liberate myself from being uh, depending on external sources so I started my business my success so I would advise people on a personal level that if they have this strong desire in them um, if they do it now April May those few months it can be the beginning of freedom liberation and um, self-sufficiency because Taurus is very much about relying on yourself like you said mm -hmm. being self-sufficient financially materially um, and 
It's also energy sources is Taurus. Yo, what are your energy sources? What kind of food? What kind of <laughs> energy sources? Is not just money, but anything else. It's now is the time where you can free yourself. It's not. It might not happen within a month, but you have thirteen years. How long is it? Thirteen, fourteen yeah, years. Yeah, thirteen, fourteen years. Yeah. That will can be your freedom, and I absolutely love Jupiter and us conjunctions. I I can't promise they always bring only good things, but uh, for me the most beautiful thing uh, that ever happened to me, except my children and husband, of course, was Jupiter and us conjunction kick started it. And like Mila said, uh, maybe connecting to your body, connecting to nature, which is Taurus connecting to what is your worth and value and resourcefulness uh, and all those other conjunctions in Aries in Pisces. It's it's all about conjunctions are about new beginnings. Mm -hmm. It's about the strength within to start something new. And uh, yeah, there's a, <laughs> yeah, it, and it, it includes the three modalities. It's there is mutable, there is cardinal Aries and mm -hmm. there is fixed. So fixed. There is yeah. the possibility of ending things, the mutable, releasing the possibility of starting new areas and the possibility to consolidate long-term, to give you freedom and consolidate you long-term into something lasting through Taurus. But wow, Mila, so in-depth. <laughs> yeah. The other like, thing I just noticed, uh, sorry to cut you off, the other thing that I just noticed that is actually this conjunction is happening in an exact opposition to where was the last new moon in Scorpio. It was on 20 degrees. Uh, the one that we're just going to have literally full moon in Scorpio now, only three days after this conjunction. The new moon in Scorpio that happened last year in November, uh, right after the last Taurus eclipse, happened on uh, 20 degrees. So this is the opposition. So this is the illumination point. Opposition is always about the illumination and showing us where is the you know, potential imbalance that needs to be corrected. And it's so interesting what you just mentioned, because actually, literally yesterday, me and my friend had a conversation about this because of someone else that we follow and that someone else said that, you know, like majority of countries have their own problem and their own economy, you know, they need to sort out. But instead, all these billions of dollars are being pumped pumped up into the war machine and people don't want it people are like i don't want my money my taxes to go to support this mm -hmm. thing right like no majority of people don't want it and she said like well but how do you how do you like uh, stop it you know like they take your taxes from your salary from your paycheck without even asking you know that's it you know they just take it stuff and you know i literally what you just said is very interesting because uh, until you actually work for yourself then, you know, like, and I'm not saying you don't pay taxes then, but, you know, you have much more control. You have much more control where you pay taxes, who do you pay taxes, and also, like, what kind of cost do you want to sell? Like, it's, I feel like it's a little bit more control than, you know, when people work for employees, employers, because, the, and especially if it's, like, governmental bodies and stuff, and this is also what I feel, that, you know, like, there is no quick solution to any of these situations, because we know a lot of these things come, go for good things, you know, like education and blah, 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 even though we know that all of that needs to be <laughs> revamped you know the the old version of it needs to become something completely different but you know all that said this some of the resources are used for positive things so it's like okay well how how do we actually change any of this and i feel that well there always will be some kind of structure in place i feel but there should be more transparency and people as aquarius the people should have more of a uh, say you know more of a say because at the moment it's not really it's not really you like balance you know, you know like, that uh, for education and the role and everything it's not the taxes you pay that gets it paid it's the property taxes that you pay but the taxes that you pay from your own company or money or salary mostly goes to pay off the debt of the country and mostly goes out for the military and how many people truly like you said and hopefully with this Pluto in Aquarius now over the next 20 years hopefully we'll finally get to have a say uh, because Pluto can be either we can be either very suppressed or we can take the power back. <laughs> That's I, I see it. We're, we're gonna do that. I see it. It's it's just it. I'm grateful for all this ridiculousness that's happening in the world because hopefully people are not gonna be misled anymore. Just because people are so much more better informed now, and and I really think a lot of people will start trying with this Jupiter in this conjunction now to be. Uh, 
financially not so dependent. And what, what gave me so much freedom, my jupiter Uranus conjunction happened in the second house, which is very similar to what's going to happen for the whole world collectively. My second mm -hmm. personal house 14 years ago, well, for the whole world is in Taurus. Um, I think a lot of people will either try to have independent source of food, independent source of some of their resources, independent source of the electricity, because Taurus rules all of those. Taurus rules the resources that you survive. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of people, whoever, um, the more awakened that they're maybe 20, 30% now, who have an incredible chance like never before. And yes, you still have to pay taxes, but me and my husband prefer paying the taxes by uh, contributing to, um, because you can pay your taxes by paying off uh, some charity. And we actually we don't do it to charities that the money will go for the person. We do it to very local small charities. And that's how, and we see the results and we go and do it. And that's how we choose to pay our taxes. There is a way that you can do this. If anyone is interested, I can explain it. But, you know, so there is yeah. more, more independence, where your resources go. So what do they go to sponsor? And that's what I see the Uranus-Jupiter conjunction. Not that you're just more in, in control of life, your resources, but also where your money goes. And I see that the people get a lot of power through their money. Why is it like Pluto in Aquarius power? Uranus conjunction with Jupiter the say where people are spending their money, Taurus, will determine a lot the trends. And that's how they'll get if they if our voting even is not reliable, you'll get to vote with your money somehow. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is this is this is so exactly like you know, uh people want to have more freedom with regards to if if you have to pay tax, you know, because like I said, there are some good things that happen with that money, then people want to have a say. I want to know where my money goes, you know, and this is so beautiful what you just described that you know, like people actually do have an option, they just don't know about it because this is not how we were being educated, you know, people that yeah, you actually much have a about money. Jupiter and Uranus are the two planets of knowledge. Uh, Uranus is incredible knowledge brilliant knowledge it's the uh, jupiter is just having the light the knowledge understanding people will get educated a lot over finances the financial system resources food all of those things over the next 14 years which is very important because right now the only thing keeping us is enslaved is that uh we're dependent on money and we're dependent on where the food comes from and where the energy and the resources come from if we exactly. see ourselves there, uh, no propaganda or not, whatever. But now, even if you don't, you know, even if you don't believe the government, whatever, if you're tied up to that financially, there is, you have to follow. You have mm -hmm. to. But if you're free on that level, on the Taurus level, with Jupiter and Uranus will give us the chance. I Then you can, the free, this, you know, this is so essential to true freedom. <laughs> But it, it again goes to the Taurus, like how people, what is the people's relationship towards themselves? How much do they trust themselves and how much do they feel they deserve? How mm -hmm. much do they feel worthy of receiving? So it, again, that's another aspect of Taurus, the self-love, you know, the self-nurture, also the cancer. And, you know, like what, what you started with, you know, with regards to like, oh, well, you know, uh, all these things are happening, hopefully to, to help people to to wake up to the realization of you know what is going on and how they can potentially create different outcome to this situation and well we know when Pluto was in Aquarius Rastan that was the French Revolution right and that changed a lot right and then we had the industrial revolutions and stuff like that so I'm not saying it has to play out the same way you know the people has to be causing havoc on the streets and stuff but we are already in a sense of like energetic revolution spiritual revolution you know this is all like changes changes are happening so you know the ego always wants to use the database of the past to project into the future so we always 
always go by, oh my God, but when last time this happened, you know, it looked like this, but we live in a different time and age. We are different, you know, like there there has been an evolution that's been taking place since. So it doesn't have to look the same way, but the point is exactly what you said. You know, people are awakening more and more to the fact that where do I feel vulnerable? The Scorpio, opposition to Taurus, where do I feel vulnerable? Where are the resources being tied up to? And I feel this is also the other aspect of Aquarius, you know, especially with Saturn now being in Pisces, decentralization. Decentralization. So it literally is that, you know, there will be more and more, you know, people creating alternatives and they already exist. We just don't know about it. But when yeah. people go looking, they will find there are, you know, just the same way there are people born with all these, you know, dark ideas about how they want to control and all everything. There are also people born with the solutions. You know, because like I said, universe never creates one without the other. So there are people, genius people born who already know the solution, you know, the different ways of getting energy, you know, and all this. I mean, I'm I'm not savvy that way, but I'm sure there are people who already, you know, know even yeah. the alternative internet and stuff. like It already exists. I am 100% convinced. We have, neighbors. We, we have neighbors that create their own electricity out of, uh, not electricity, but to run their cars with water. I said, how? And he says, well, we, it's so easy. This has existed for many years and they're doing it all over the neighbors here. The... <laughs> you can... That's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. That it's, he says it's not very difficult, you know. Usually, do... that, there's a thing, you know, the solutions are, the, you know, is the, it's so interesting because you know how you have even with the pharmaceuticals, right? The, the most <laughs> multi-billion dollars, you know, money-making industry. Uh the actually usually the cures for most ailments are the simplest found in nature for free you know so that's why they say they cannot patent those because it's from nature right so they create the chemicals and they create a lot of side effects so that's so interesting like what you just said because literally this is what it is usually the solution to the problem is actually quite simple and it's already there it's already there and usually it's not even very expensive but because we were being <laughs> wired differently by the collective program we don't go looking we just go for what somebody hands us as a solution so that's what i mean this is literally what it is more and people more people are becoming start... much more resourceful because things are becoming so unaffordable and again this yeah. is the most energy but jupiter Uranus people become so ingenious how to provide those essentials that they need how to find them how to discover them in new ways uh, there will be, I believe, there will be great inventions exactly about energy, about food, with the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction that comes, and I think it people will use them to free themselves economically, in a tor in a Taurus way, basically. <laughs> So it's, I'm very excited. I feel, and I know it's first on the psychological level, this will happen and then we'll start seeing the results. But thank you for the deep insights. I was also reading comments and people were discussing uh, and very interested in what you have to say. Thank you again. Uh, thank you. And, I think uh, it's really like, it is... Uh... In very exciting times we are living in, uh, living right now. I mean, there are a lot of uh, challenges attached to it because we literally are breaking out of the Pisces age and creating a new history. And, you know, we are in the transitionary period and it's not easy because oh. there is nothing yet to follow. But uh, I, I, I really feel like it's exciting because in a sense, we really are like our ancestors where that were building cities and bridges and railways and stuff. That's exactly what we are doing right now. Like, yeah, we will not see the full manifestation and the final result. But uh, this is literally where the, I always think that in a high vibration, when people heal the disconnection from the all, we are like the bees in a beehive. We are working towards the same goal. It just looks a little bit differently. And that's literally where we are at. And, you know, this is where I feel where more and more these very tragic and challenging situations that are happening in the world, it will actually connect people. It will open their heart and connect people and realize, help people realize what actually matters. You know, so I, I feel excited. I think uh, despite the challenges, uh, I really feel, especially with the kites, we are heading exactly where we meant to be heading. So, yeah. <laughs> that kite is really helping. <laughs> For the next yes. three, four years, it's really helping, no matter what comes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mila. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. May you benefit most. May you be inspired into some brilliant idea 
may you receive your uh, financial freedom in any way possible and your uh, in connection to yourself, like we all talked, your connection to nature, connection to body, because that's 